and welcome back to Witch Fix. And today I'm looking at a graphic novel called Skim by Mariko Tamaki, uh, illustrated by Gillian Tamaki, who is Mariko's cousin, I believe. Um, this is slightly a weird one because late last year I was in kind of a buying spree looking for different graphic novels to add to my tree pile because I'd recently gotten into reading them and they were really helping me to hit my Goodreads book total because they don't take that long to read but um I think I bought this one and I honestly can't remember if I bought it just because I thought it was a graphic novel about lesbians which is something that I was interested in because it was like oh, okay that's a nice representation it's going to be a nice kind of real life story and not like superheroes or anything supernatural or I knew it was about a teenage Wiccan when I bought it and had forgotten that when it came time to take it down off my to read pile but it was in my regular to read pile and not my podcast to read pile. So I don't think that I actually knew that this was going to be about Wicca. That was just an amazing happenstance that it happened to fit into the theme of the podcast quite nicely, as well as being an amazing graphic novel that I really enjoyed reading. I am going to give quite a lot of trigger warnings for it, however, because it does deal with a lot of content that some people might find upsetting or triggering. Uh, it deals with depression especially teen depression, suicide, a relationship between a teacher and a student, and also features the use of some homophobic slurs as well. The graphic novel itself, I don't know what to say that it's about, because I feel like the plot just is the experience of living life in this character's skin, and therefore it doesn't really have so much as a plot, which you could say has a beginning, a middle, and an end. But it's sort of one of those things which usually happens in films where they make a film about, you know, that one summer that changed my life forever. And it usually involves a romance and some other coming of age stuff. It was sort of like that. If I had to describe it using other things that I have seen or read or whatever, I would sort of call it The Craft via Ghost World. It's very much where I would put it. It has that very... Uh, big focus on like teenage friendships the experience of being a teenager who doesn't fit in who feels like an outsider who is dealing with depression and various other things while also having the wicked elements in it as well and although it was published in 2008 it's set in the early 90s so again it kind of reads like that craft ghost world kind of feeling of being very early on in the 90s it has a lot of the references and a lot of the technology and stuff that is more to do with the early 90s which is of course when I was a child uh, so that was quite nostalgic for me. The sort of kicking off point of the not plot I would say is uh, a guy who goes to Skim's high school kills himself and it's sort of referenced throughout the whole plot mainly to do with the student body response to this because a load of girls get together and they make a club which is called Girls Celebrate Life and they go whole hog on putting up notice boards covered in like rainbows and stuff. And they kind of idolise this guy who killed himself. And they kind of don't see him as a person. They see him as this thing that happened that they are reacting to. It also follows his girlfriend and, you know, what she's experiencing and what's happening to her through the lens of Skim watching her. And also how it affects Skim herself and how she then deals with her own depression and the pressures put on her by a student body and school officials who are now very hot on the issue of people who don't fit in and people who appear depressed. This actually applies quite strongly to Skim and her singular friend who is called Lisa. Lisa is kind of a hard case. She doesn't seem to care about as many things as Skim does. She seems to be a lot angrier and a lot cooler. Um, the both of them have the interest in Wicca. It is actually mentioned quite a lot throughout the graphic novel, although less as the issues go on, like through the volume. It's mostly mentioned at the beginning. Um, in the first part, they actually go to like an open circle meeting and they do that. And then you see Skim's altar. She talks about various Wiccan spells that she's performed and her tarot cards as well become quite an important touchstone throughout the rest of the graphic novel. Another thing that's going on in the life of the main character is her relationship with a cool teacher at her school called Ms Archer. Uh, Ms Archer is young and fun and 
kind of down to earth and also kooky in a way that Skim is also and she starts having a relationship with her. You don't see a lot of this relationship happening. They do share a kiss at one point but a lot of it is through what is happening to Skim when she is alone and not through scenes where she's shown with Miss Archer. It's not shown in a positive or negative light, it is literally just shown as something that is happening and it's sort of up to the reader to decide what they think the relationship means or what it's really about for both of them and obviously how it ends as well. Now I was kind of puzzled by the title when I picked this one up because the main character is referred to as Skim throughout and I kind of thought oh, okay so it's just a nickname or something but then at one point I think it is Ms Archer asks her because her name is Kim why people call her Skim and she says because I'm not and I went away and I googled you know what does this mean and urban dictionary one of the definitions that it threw up was that it's like a skinny white person and kim herself in the graphic novel is asian canadian and not skinny not fat either just kind of like normal looking and she has like dark hair and it's kind of i guess the antithesis of the tiny blonde girl so I guess that's where the name comes from. The actual art of the comic is in black and white. A lot of it kind of looks just sketched with um, charcoal or other parts of it look like they've just been done with ink. Um, there isn't like a huge amount of hyper realistic detail. It kind of looks like cartoon-ish, like stylized simplistically for real figures. Not like it's meant to be cartoonish, but just simplified and done in a specific style. I don't know a huge amount about art, can you tell? But it does look really lovely and quite effective in most places. Um, lots of differences between like dark space being used and light space being used. What I found really lovely was the way in which quite a lot of the writing is put in. A lot of it is just Kim's diary entries. They'll just be like single lines of text in scenes as well as dialogue, uh, which are from her diary and kind of reveal her like inner thoughts. And occasionally we'll get like snapshots of her Wiccan altar and her thinking things about Wicca, which is really nice. There isn't really a huge amount of dialogue um, or monologue used throughout the book. There is actually like barely, I guess, an average of like 20 to 25 words per two pages. So it's quite low on dialogue. It's mainly the feeling you get from reading it. Like... The way you feel sinking into the, the images and being carried along by the little bit of dialogue and little bit of plot that there is. It is like stepping into the headspace of a teenager who is in that moment in their life that is changing things. And they're kind of coming out of one state of being and going into another, whatever that may be. And I don't know if it's because I have been the lesbian confused bullied, depressed, Wiccan teenager, but I really related to it and I found it really quite heart-wrenching and enjoyable in quite a nice, delightfully kitschy 90s way. It's quite a lot unlike a lot of the other graphic novels that I've read and reviewed for the podcast so far in that it's not about like fantasy witchcraft um, in any way. I think the Black Magic, Coffin Hill style of comics tend to use Wicca as a term, but then use quite a lot of fantasy magic and involve demons and things like that this is definitely magical not even really magical realism it's just straight up realism she's a practicing wiccan but nothing actually magical happens within the book i guess unless you count the fact that she does several rituals to um get miss archer to notice her and to um attract her affection so i guess that is something you could say it does do that's magic but she doesn't really attribute their relationship to those actions but it is used as a kind of device to show where she's at with the relationship is she wanting to go further with it is she wanting to invite more romance into her life or is she trying to put that to one side and banish it from her thinking and move on to other things so it's quite a good barometer for her emotionally there's some nice little moments of wry humor sprinkled through that kind of reminded me of 
Daria and other sort of things that felt sardonic teenagers in the 90s. Um, for instance, like right at the start on page nine, um, Skim is meeting up with her friend and she has a cast on her arm and gets asked, you know, what did you do to your arm and how did that happen? She says that she fell off her bike, but then there's an internal monologue snippet at the bottom that says, tripped on altar, getting out of bed and fell on mom's candelabra. And just little comments back and forth between her and her friend also add this kind of witty snappy dialogue in as well as a lot of the quite deeper emotional stuff that gets talked about or just shown through various ways like with the art style there's several pages where it's just over a two-page spread just like woodland and one character is just alone in the woods kind of lost in the middle of it which is obviously quite a great way to show isolation and a lots of frames of skim kind of walking the streets in the dark alone again it just kind of all brings it across in a really clever show don't tell kind of way it was not incredibly expensive to buy i think i actually got this for about like four pounds on ebay and it was new obviously because it came out in 2008 i guess you can buy quite a lot of them second hand the original cover price on mine is 9.99 which i would say is actually pretty worth it for this if you wanted to buy it at cover price if you saw it in like a comic book shop or something, although the only comic book shop that I'm near literally only stocks like Marvel and DC comics. It doesn't really do anything that's not that. So you might have a hard time finding it if you live in a place like I do. But if you live somewhere where they have you know, more of a range, you'll probably be able to find this. Speaking, however, of the more conventional kind of widely known comic book publishers, um, the writer Mariko Tamaki has also worked on some She-Hulk comics and Supergirl comics, neither of which I know anything about because I don't really read those, but I guess you could check those out also if you wanted to read more stuff by her. She's also written several other kind of graphic novels, novels about like coming of age type topics. Uh, there's one called This One Summer, which is another kind of teenage coming of age story, and a novel uh, from year 2000 called Cover Me which is uh, another coming-of-age story dealing with depression uh, in uh, an adolescent character. So it's definitely something that she's covered quite well, and if you like Skim, which I obviously did very much, you, I, you could, like me, go and check out those other things and give them a bit of a read. So I might have found like my new favourite comic book author, to be honest. I definitely recommend this to you if you don't really like the cool kind of fantastical worlds that a lot of graphic novels are set in like with superheroes or supernatural fantasy creatures like a lot of the other graphic novels that i reviewed on the podcast because this is very much just like a real life novel about real people doing real things uh, i would definitely compare it to ghost world both the graphic novel and the movie um because that's what it mostly reminds me of so for fans of that definitely give this a read also if you like things like persepolis which is like a, a true story of someone's life dealing with quite a lot of hefty emotional stuff but in but sort of through the lens of teenage rebellion again perfect read for you and people who like reading about real life wiccans again definitely give it a look out i probably wouldn't recommend it for people who don't like black and white art because it definitely is all black and white and for people who prefer a more fantastical bent to their magical characters in comics and I guess for anyone who would find the subject matter that I gave warnings for and then discussed to be triggering in any way it might you know make you feel a little bit unhappy you know there's certain times in your life where you just don't want to read the bell jar I've had those times it is a fantastic book, but at the same time, you don't want to poke the bear. So it's not going to be the book to take you out of that place if you are in a not so great place. So definitely leave it for a time when you feel emotionally strong. Aside from that, I do think it is a phenomenal book and definitely one I'm going to be adding to the permanent collection of stuff that I don't just read and then put back on eBay once I've reviewed it because heads up, I do do that. And if you're interested, I can let you have my eBay username so that you can find quite a lot of the books that I have reviewed and get your hands on some copies. In the meantime, do let me know if you come up with anything else that is similar to this that you think I might enjoy and you can get in touch in the usual ways, which is Twitter at witchfix or witchfixpodcast at gmail.com.
Also, look in the description box. You can see how you can donate to Patreon and check the Twitter account for information about um, the Amazon wish list for the podcast. So you can see if you can donate any of the items that you'd like to see reviewed or that I would like to review for you. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.